Thank you very much. Uh, it's been a long ceremony, but I'm sure you've enjoyed every minute of it. And uh, we are all happy that we're here today. Um, thank you, Reverend Wengam. I am always tempted to call him Pastor Wengam because uh, he was my pastor, associate pastor, um, for your State of the Nation address. <laughs> Because he laid out everything that the church seeks to do uh, under his new leadership. We thank you very much. And um, I also note uh, something our former Chief Justice, I'm, I'm seated next to her, and when you called out the directors and uh, you prayed for them, he noticed that there was only one woman, and she noticed that there was only one woman, and she said, you men, if you even could make a man women's ministry director, you'd have taken that position too. <laughs> so we want to see the women come up, so that next time they call the directors, we'll see more women amongst you. For those of you who follow the news, you'll be surprised I'm here, because I'm supposed to be in Nigeria. And I was in Nigeria till early this morning. Uh, past, uh, I say Pastor Wengam. Reverend Wengam, our general superintendent, had invited me to be here today, and he had given me the date several weeks ago. And um, just last week, I got a call from President Jonathan, and uh, he asked me to step in the place of President Bai Koroma, former president, uh, president of Sierra Leone, who was supposed to lead the West African Elders Forum, but then had been co-opted by ECOWAS to lead their observer mission. And so he pleaded with me to come and lead the West African this forum uh, mission to Nigeria. And so I was in Nigeria until this morning. I had to fly in uh, just for the ceremony. And if you don't see me shortly after this, it means I've flown back to Nigeria to continue my work. <laughs> um, I'm not going to take too much time. And um, I'll just make three remarks. The first, is about what I notice change. And um, the second is what I think uh, the church should be doing. And the third will be about acknowledgments to people who have helped build my spirituality. And so change is a permanent phenomenon that God created. When you say change and you say permanent, they are, that they, they are opposite to each other. Because if something is permanent, it means it doesn't change. But change means things continue to transform. And so change is a permanent phenomenon, and um, it is what makes the world uh, progressive. Because when change happens, then it means that you move things to another level. And I think that is what has been happening in Assemblies of God Church. We've had several general superintendents who have handed over one to the other. And currently we're witnessing a transfer from our general superintendent, uh, Reverend Frimpong Manso, uh, steam to our new team headed by Reverend Wengam. It reminds me always of a relay race. Everybody runs a segment of the race. And when you run your segment, by the time you're getting to hand over the baton, your legs are tired. And so when you hand over the baton, you always see that the person who takes the baton runs at a greater speed. And so, that baton has been handed over by Reverend from Palm Manso after doing very fantastic work for the church. If there's one thing I can be proud of Reverend from Palm Manso is our beautiful headquarters building. Now, we don't feel shy to invite and receive any international visitors to our headquarters because it can rival any headquarters anywhere in the world. And the baton has been handed over to Reverend Wengam and when he was giving his State of the Nation address, he talked about the Centenary Village. And I know that some churches have convention centers and uh, uh, places like that, beautiful places like that. And I note uh, the church of my former chairman, the Pentecost Church, 
have a very beautiful uh, convention center outside Kaswa there somewhere. But I spoke with Reverend Wengam and we conspired and I'm telling Elder Ofusuampofo to tell Reverend Yamiche that our centenary village is going to be bigger and more beautiful than your convention center. <laughs> And may it not suffer the fate of some national cathedrals that I know. <laughs> we shall build this one. And I'll be one of the chief fundraisers. <laughs> so Reverend Wengam, send me anywhere to solicit funds if I have to go on my knees and beg for money for the Centenary Village. I will do so. <laughs> when Reverend Wengam was speaking in the State of the Nation Address, or the State of the Assemblies of God Address, he spoke about the church, you know, uh, contributing to national dialogue and being able to speak truth and to give guidance to leadership. The church does not exist only to pray for leaders. It exists also to provide suggestions and guidance to leaders. Because after all, the church does not hang in the sky. The church exists in society. And whatever happens in society affects the church. Today, with the economic crisis that we are in, it affects our congregation all across the country. And so it's necessary for the church to continue speaking out any time it thinks that things are not going properly. And that's why I want to congratulate the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Church, uh, 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 Council for the recent letter that they addressed to government, giving some suggestions about what government should do in the midst of this crisis. And I expect that this should be done no matter which government is, is in office. There are many times when men of God and moral society who should speak up become quiet when one government is in and then become very loud when another government is in. We must seem to be seen to be balanced, to be non-partisan. We must not shout for we're in one government and then go quiet in another one. We must always speak truth to whoever uh, is, is in office because it affects the lives of our congregation. And Christians must not be afraid to participate in politics. Recently, I gave a speech in Chatham House, and I said that the price that the whites pay for not participating in politics is to be ruled by fools. And so we, as Christians, should not shy away from politics, stand for elective office, go to parliament, advocate, and participate in creating a sense of direction to progress and prosperity for your nation. And some of us are believers, we are Christians, and yet, we will vie even for the highest office of the land. There's nothing in the Bible that stops us from doing that. And so I encourage all of you, if you have the possibility to be able to participate in leadership, please don't hesitate to do so. Then, my third one is a few acknowledgments. And the first one goes to Reverend Wengam. I want to congratulate him. Um, as I told you, he was associate pastor in our church for a long time. I'm a proud member of the Ringway Gospel Center, Assemblies of God Church. And Reverend Wengam was our associate pastor for a long time. When he left to go and plant Cedar Mountain Church, I can assure you some of us were not happy. We were very sad that he was leaving our church. But there's a saying that when one door is closed, many more are opened. He left, planted Cedar Mountain Church. Today, if you go and see what Cedar Mountain Church is, Cedar Mountain is to the glory of God. I've worshipped there a few times, and I'm always amazed when I enter the auditorium. What a beautiful sanctuary to the glory of God it is. And so I want to thank um, Reverend Wengam for not only being a close friend to my wife and I, but also helping in my spiritual growth. I've heard him preached his sermon several times, 
and you're, 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 you're not lucky that he, he of course, uh, Reverend Botokambani's uh, sermon was powerful and fantastic. Uh, Reverend Wengam is a bit of a teacher. When he preaches his sermon, I said that it's like he's opening your head and he's stuffing the Bible inside your head. And so I thank him. The next is Reverend Nessa J and his wife, Grace. <laughs> we call her Ogre. Um, Reverend Nessa J was the one who received me into Assemblies of God Church. And he's been my pastor for many years. He's now retired, and um, I hope he's taking uh, a rest. But men of God never retire. I'm sure you know that. The next is uh, Reverend Ayusu. Reverend Ayusu, too, was associate pastor with uh, Ringway Gospel Center. And uh, like uh, Reverend Wengam, he also left to head a new church. He's currently a regional superintendent for Accra West. And uh, he also has been a part of my spiritual growth of my wife and I. And I want to acknowledge him and thank him. And um, the final one is our current head pastor, uh, Reverend Benjamin Tejte. His wife also happens to be Grace. It looks like everybody who heads our church must have a wife called Grace. Otherwise, you, you won't head our church. And so I want to acknowledge them too. And finally, somebody came to me, one of our pastors. I told a story in his church, and he said, you better tell the story of the donkey. And uh, for those who have heard it, pardon me, because you'll be hearing it for the second time. For those who haven't heard it, uh, here goes. The donkey, remember the donkey that carried Jesus into Jerusalem? When they were going into Jerusalem, they were throwing flowers and powder, and they were singing and hailing, you know, uh, Jesus. Fortunately, the donkey thought the praises were for the donkey. And so when he got home, he told his mother, he said, hey, mommy, today was a great day. I went to Jerusalem, and as I was going in, they were pouring powder on me, and they were singing my praises and all that. And he said, what, you ugly donkey, who is going to sing your praises and all that? And then uh, the little donkey said, yes, they were singing for me. He says, if you like, let's go. I'll go into Jerusalem again, and you'll see what they'll do. All the people will come out and praise me and pour powder on me. And so the next day, mother donkey went with baby donkey. And she went and stood somewhere and was watching. And baby donkey was walking into Jerusalem. Unfortunately, they started throwing stones at baby donkey. And so what is this ugly donkey doing here? And they started chasing uh, the donkey out of the way. So she came back very dispirited to her mother and said, Mommy, I don't know what happened. Yesterday, these same people were praising me and singing for me and pouring powder on me. Today, they've changed completely. And the mother said, the praise was not for you. It was for the one sitting on your back, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And so the lesson we learn is that all praise goes to Jesus Christ and not to us. So thank you very much. Congratulations, Reverend Wengam. And your team, I know you have a great team that is going to support you. And we, the congregation, I pledge on behalf of the congregation that we're going to be solidly behind you and we're going to work with you to achieve the targets that you have just read out to us in your State of the Nation address. Thank you very much. God bless you.